Painting an arm and it can sometimes be a laborious task, so every now and then it's fun to work on a unique character model. Let's talk about how to really make them stand out on the battlefield. We'll get started after this. Pickle job! Pickle job! Miniatures! Excellent! Hello and welcome to the Pickle Jar. My name's Josh. And today we're going to be talking about how to help your characters and special units really stand out from the rest of your army when they're deployed on the tabletop. Now, characters and special units are a fantastic palette cleanser and is often used as a little bit of a reward for painting up multiple units for your army. The trouble with this is that because we've been painting our units in the same way for however long, we end up just using this exact same technique for our characters and they don't really stand out too much. Today I'm going to be working on this awesome Necron model. My son Alfie bought me this guy for my birthday last year and I'm really looking forward to getting some paint on him. This is Illumino Seras, the Necron who helped bring about the downfall of the Necron Tur and damned his race for eternity. Now that's all well and good saying all that, but as is often the case with miniatures, the in-game rules often fail to live up to the law. How many times have we read about the battle-hardened space marine captain, victorious in countless campaigns across numerous systems, killed off by something like a scarab swarm, or something equally inoffensive? No, the rules don't live up to the law, but we can at least do our best to make the model live up to the background. Now this model has the benefit of being hugely different than the bulk of my Necron army, already just by its own build. I mean, he's a huge spider boy, if he doesn't stand out, I don't know what will. If you're looking for something a little bit more inconspicuous, like a Space Marine Captain for example, you can always look at adding something to the build before you start painting, like a unique armour or weapon, or anything else iconic from their story. When it comes to painting a one-off model, there are a few things you need to think about. Do you want it to fit in with your army's colour scheme, or are you going to paint him in the character box art colours? Now, if you opt for the box art, then odds are it's going to stand out from your army as a result, because it won't be painted in your colour scheme. In my own personal experience though, I think that most people tend to paint them to match the army. So the question then becomes, how do I paint this to fit in with my army, but also have it stand out from the rest of my army? Now once again, this is where knowing the character's backstory can help you. Let's take Senor Suarez, for example. Now, he's an absolute genius, but he's also a little bit of an outcast, only being kept around because of his massive wealth of knowledge. So I don't think that he would be in quite as tip-top condition as maybe some overlords or things like that. Now to show this on the model, I can add scratches and dings into the armour, perhaps a little bit of grime in some of the joints and little bits and pieces like that, just to show that he's not quite as well kept as some of the other sort of characters for the army. Now I don't want to go too over the top with this because he is obviously still a big deal and he would be looking after himself to a certain extent. He wouldn't be quite as knackered as a normal Necron warrior, but he also wouldn't look as well kept and sort of resplendent as an overlord. These kinds of details may seem small and you may think that adding stuff like this doesn't actually make too much difference because of how small a detail it is. But once you have a few bits of damage and detail and all these little things, they all add up and the overall effect will look really cool and help set this model apart from the rest of your army. Aside from adding in details like this, you can add in extra colours to your existing colour scheme. Characters will normally have some sort of ornamentation or extra bits that you can paint up. So pick a colour that will stand out a bit and really pop on the tabletop, but will still go with this colour scheme that you're already using. Metallics are quite good for this because they tend to go with most colour schemes and they help make your character look extra important because of the sort of precious metal look. One of the ways to help tie an army together if you are 
painting your characters or painting units in different ways is to use a unifying colour across the entire army. Something that will tie everything in so you can tell it's all one force. Now, for my Necrons, the way that I do this is by making sure that A, they are all in the same sort of metallics, but one of the biggest things that stands out the most across this force is their weapons. Now, I absolutely love this method for painting up my Necron blades. I have a tutorial on this method, link in the top right hand corner right about now. But this really stands out on the battlefield and it helps to unify every single model on the army. Whether it's got a blade or whether it's got some sort of gauze gun, it all uses the same green done in the same way. And using stuff like this, even if you're painting your models in different ways, if you've got one unifying factor, whether that's the weaponry or the base, it really helps to tie them all together. Now, there's a real paradox when basing characters, as you have both more scope for being creative, but you'll also need to keep it in line with the rest of the army, as the base is another thing that can help tie a force together if they are painted differently. You can actually get away with painting models themselves completely differently. If they're all based the same, they will all look like part of the same group. So when it comes to basing characters, you need to keep the overall theme or look of the base the same as your other models, but that doesn't stop you from adding in some extra detail. Now again, Senor Suarez has already got some extra stuff on his base as part of the model. It comes with the kit, there's nothing to sort of add on extra here, this is all part of the model. But if your model doesn't come with a sculpted base, or if you just don't like the look of it and decide not to use it, you can always add your own details. Now this can be as simple as adding a bit of cork or slate or something and having your character stand on top of this, literally elevating them and helping them to stand out. You can get more creative than that by adding in some extra ground features. If you've got a bigger base, this is even better. Slight variations to a theme won't make it look too much out of place, but it will make it stand apart and draw the eye. Have you got a particular race that your hero dislikes? Why not add a decapitated head or some other body parts to the base? Are they known for a particular attack or move? Then maybe add some scorch marks or damage around them. Extra little details like this just help to sort of set that character in that zone and in that environment and also help to make them stand out from the rest of your army. Adding extra details to a character is a fun process. Generally they will already look a little bit different, which can give you a little bit more confidence to try adding a few variations. Now, some people make their own characters and backstory, and it really allows them to create exactly what they want. Other people use pre-existing characters and models, and they add their own details to help them create something unique. Now, whichever route you take, one thing will always be the same. You'll spend hours building and painting these cool characters to help them stand out on the table, only for them to be targeted immediately because they stand out on the table. On second thoughts, maybe I'll just paint them exactly the same as my basic troops. If you enjoyed the video guys be sure to leave a like down below and if you want to help support the channel then there are our affiliate links and sponsor links down below in the description. I live stream here on the Pickle Jar every Wednesday evening from 8pm so if you're doing your own hobby or if you just want to hang out and say hi be sure to pop along and join in the chat. If not then we also have a discord server link for that down below where you can share your work and join in the conversation with me and the rest of the community. Finally, I just want to say a massive thank you to all our current channel members. You guys are absolutely amazing and the support that you are giving us is massively, massively appreciated. So thank you very much. If you'd like to become a member yourself, then simply click the join link down below. That's all from me and I'll see you next week with another video.